हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज मिन्नी सेठी आई होप यू ऑल आर स्टेइंग हेल्दी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट लोफ रिटर्न टू स्केल एंड इकोनॉमीज एंड दिस इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल सो व्हाट इज लोफ रिटर्न टू स्केल लोफ रिटर्न टू स्केल इज लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड लो एज वी नो एट लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड ऑल फैक्टर्स आर वेरिएबल नो फैक्टर इज फिक्स्ड means at long time period we can change scale of production by changing all factors of production like land raw material machineries plants etc and when we change our production by changing all factors of production then three possibilities can arise increasing return to scale constant return to scale and diminishing return to scale one by one we discuss about each so firstly we are going to talk about increasing return to scale when percentage increase in output is more than percentage increase in input it will be called increasing return to scale when percentage increase in output is more than percentage increase in input it will be called increasing return to scale here you can see our inputs are labor and capital first column we have labor and second column we have capital third column we have total output fourth column we have percentage change in input last column we have percentage change in output one labor and one capital is giving 100 units of output but when we increase our labor and capital from 1 to 2 our output increase from 100 to 220 units so here you can see percentage change in input is 100% means we increase our labor and capital from 1 to 2 but percentage change in output is 120% means our output change from 100 to 220 units so here you can see percentage change in output is more than percentage change in input so it will be called increasing return to scale same thing you can see in this diagram on x axis we have labor and y axis we have capital one labor and one capital is giving 100 unit of production but when we increase our labor and capital from 1 to 2 our output increase from 100 to 220 so here you can see percentage change in input is 100% but percentage change in output is 120% so it will be called uh, increasing return to scale now we will see constant return to scale when output increase at same proportion as input increase it will be called constant return to scale when our output increase at same proportion as input increase it will be called constant return to scale here you can see one labor and one capital are giving 100 units of production but when we change our both input labor and capital from 1 to 2 our output increase from 100 to 200 units so here you can see percentage change in input is 100% means we uh, we change our input from labor and capital from 1 to 2 and percentage change in output also 100% our output increase from 100 unit to 200 unit so here you can see percentage increase in output is exactly same percentage change in input so it will be called constant return to scale same thing you can see in this diagram on x axis we have labor and y axis we have capital one capital and one labor is giving 100 units of production when we increase our labor and capital both from 1 to 2 our output increase from 100 unit to 200 units so here you can see percentage increase in input is 100% and percentage increase in output also 100% so it will be called constant return to scale now we will see diminishing return to scale when percentage increase in output is less than percentage increase in input it will be called diminishing return to scale when percentage increase in output is less than percentage increase in input it will be called diminishing return to scale here you can see our inputs so one labor and one capital are giving 100 units of output but when we increase our both input from 1 to 2 our output increase from 100 to 180 units so here you can see percentage change in input is 100% means we change our labor and capital from 1 to 2 but percentage change in output is only 80% our output change only 100 to 180 so here you can see percentage change in output is only 80% but percentage change in input is 100% 
so here percentage change in output is less than percentage change in input so it will be called diminishing return to scale same thing you can see in this diagram one labor and one capital is giving 100 units of production but when we increase our both inputs uh, labor and capital from 1 to 2 our uh, output increase from 100 units to 180 units so here percentage change in input is 100 percent but percentage change in output is only 80 percent so we can say the percentage change in output is less than percentage change in input so it will be called a diminishing return to scale now we will see economies and diseconomies of scale first of all we are talking about economies of scale economies of scale are some advantages that companies get when they increase their scale of production and economies of scale basically divided into two parts internal economies of scale and external economies of scale first of all we will see internal economies of scale internal economies of scale means when a company get advantage inside the business means when business enhancing factor found inside the company and first internal economies of scale is technical economies of scale large firm get technical economies of scale when they invest in modern technology financial economies of scale means when large firm get loan at lower interest rate managerial economies of scale means when large firm can hire people with specific skill set and marketing economies of scale means when large firm increase their market by opening so many branches and reduce their advertisement and promotional cost. Next is inventory economies of scale. Large firm get inventory economies of scale because they can get raw material at lower cost. Last is better utilization of resources. Obviously, large firm can utilize their resources at best way. Now we will see external economies of scale. External economies of scale means business enhancing factors are found outside the company. Or we can say that external economies of scale means some advantages that each firm gets when whole industry is expanding. And first external economies of scale is economies of concentration. When whole industry is expanding, then each firm can get advantage of skilled labor, transportation, communication, etc. Next is economies of information. When whole industry is expanding, then so many trade and business journal will publish. Then it becomes convenient for firm to collect all necessary information. Last is economies of disintegration. When whole industry is expanding, then industry will divide their task between so many firms. So that each task is performed by expert only. For example, moped industry divide their task into different firms. Those who are expert in chain, they will produce chain. Those who are expert in pedal, they will produce pedal. Those who are expert in tires, they will make a tire. So by this firm can get so many advantage. It will be called external economies of scale. Now we are going to talk about this economies of scale. This economies of scale means large organization producing at a higher cost. This economies of scale means large organization is producing at a higher cost. This economies of scale also divided into two parts, internal diseconomies of scale and external diseconomies of scale. First of all, we are going to talk about internal diseconomies of scale. Internal diseconomies of scale means cost increasing factors are found inside your company. And first internal diseconomies of scale is limitation on availability of factor of production. When you are continuous increasing your production, then after certain point, it is not possible to meet requirement of raw material from local supplier. That's why you have to get the raw material from other locations at higher price it will increase your cost. Next is problem in management. As production is continuous increasing, obviously it will increase burden and inefficiency in management system. Last is technical factor. As production is continuous increasing after certain time period, per unit cost will increase because of so many technical reasons. Now we are going to talk about external diseconomies of scale. External diseconomies of scale means as a whole industry is expanding, some disadvantages will happen. 
and its uh, burden will fall on all firms in industry. And first external diseconomies of scale is labor becomes scarce. Uh, as uh, industry is expanding, there is more demand of labor, but supply of labor is limited. As a result, wage rate will increase. Second is land becomes scarce. As industry is expanding, obviously there is more demand of land, but supply is limited. As a result, rent will increase. Next is traffic, congestion and pollution. As industry is expanding, there is so much traffic, congestion and pollution. As a result, transportation and parking cost will increase. Next is limited natural resources. As we know, our natural resources are limited. But as industry is expanding, there is more demand of natural resources, but supply is limited. Last is increased cost of raw material. As industry is expanding, there is more and more demand of raw material. As a result, prices of raw material will increase. So this is all about law of return to scale and economies and diseconomies of scale. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye, take care.